What is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video and in today's video we are going to be ranking every single Scream film from my least favorite to my favorite. So let's get into it. Coming in in last place we have Scream 4. This is the least creative, um, most like trying to just be an original film or trying to at least do what the original did well like possible bro. Um, people say Scream 3 is kind of like the black sheep in the franchise. I disagree personally. I think Scream 4 is. Scream 4 is, I feel like, the one most people even forget exists. I completely forget this movie exists once in a while. I'm not even kidding. Um, I Last weekend or two weekends ago, I went down, watched 1, 2, and 3. Then literally, instinctually, just was going to go right to Scream. Um, and I thought, wait, we're missing one. If Scream 6 is right after Scream 2022, then, and then I remembered, oh, we got Scream 4. Um, this movie is just bad in every sense of the word. You know, people, a lot of people say, oh, Scream's that one franchise that has no bad movies. I completely disagree. Scream's got three bad movies. Three out of the six. Half the franchise is bad. This franchise isn't consistent. I don't care what anyone says. Having said that, Scream 4 is the worst. The lighting and the camera work, the cinematography is awful in this movie. This movie is so ugly. This may be the ugliest movie I've ever seen. Um, it is just this ugly yellow color. It's super shiny. All the characters look blurry and just, it's so ugly. Um, none of the characters in this movie have anything to do. Sydney, Jill, which is her cousin, um, the mother of Jill, Dewey, they all do nothing. They most of them sit in the house, sit in this house this entire time and do nothing throughout the entire film. The opening is god awful. They throw in two. First of all, we have like three, and three um, fake outs in a row, and then it throws us into a scenario with two teenage girls that we don't, don't give a shit about because their personalities are so bland. They are nothing characters, and we feel no emotion when they get killed. Um, also, again, this this film tries to take us back to basics by having it in Woodsboro, and and you know, it just it just feels like they were trying so hard to make this back to basics, and it just failed. It fell flat on its face. Um, Dewey, again, another character who does nothing in this movie. He you see him pop up every once in a while, and when he does, he's mainly just investigating a crime scene. And that's pretty much it. Um, Gail is the only one who's got her own little side story in this, which is cool. She, you know, she goes off and kind of does her own thing. Um, but this film just feels very, very cheap. It just feels direct to video, if I'm being completely honest. Um, some side characters are good. I like Charlie and I like, uh, obviously I like, um, why am I forgetting your name? Kirby. Uh, I like, I love Kirby. She's a great side character. I love some of the brutality and some of the kills, like in the beginning. Um, I hate some other side characters that are goofy. I, I I don't like those two cops that get killed. They're just, they're fucking idiots. I mean, let's be honest, they're just idiots. Um, I don't like Sydney in this movie either. She doesn't feel like Sydney. She feels very laid back and just quiet and just. She's got no personality. She's just. There's nothing to her. Um, in this movie, and I don't like it. It's kind of I kind of have the same problem with her in another film, but she's got like no personality in this movie. And this this movie also just feels very like uh, it doesn't feel like it has a direction. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. You know, it just feels like it's just trying to just recreate what's already been done a million damn times. This movie is very directionless. Um, you know, there's really no hints as to why the killer's doing what they're doing. Um, whereas in the other, some of the other films like Scream 6, 5 even, like a lot of them have some hints, like the, the killer drops some hints as to why they're doing what they're doing. This movie has none of that. Also, Roger L. Jackson in this movie sounds weird. I don't know if that's just me. Um, I feel like I've heard some other people say this. He just sounds different. His voice doesn't sound the same. Oh, and the CGI knife in this movie is atrocious. I don't know why they thought it would have been a good idea to go with a CGI knife. Dumbest decision they could have made. Um... Yeah, Scream 4 is a, is a turd. I hate this movie. Next up on this list, naturally, we have Scream 3. Now, it's funny because I tried filming this video the other day, but then I got caught up and busy. 
This film and Scream 5 flip-flop like crazy. Spoiler, that's the next one on my list. Those two movies flip-flop like crazy. Just the other day when I was trying to film this video, I had Scream 5 here instead of Scream 3. Giving it some more thought. I'm putting Scream 3 here. Mainly because this movie is just, it, it's early 2000s horror. Um, and not even just horror in general. It's probably, any movie really that has come out in the early 2000s usually ends up being pretty eh. Um, when it's, when it's like a sequel in a franchise, at least Halloween Resurrection, Terminator 3, Scream 3, they kind of be, end up being iffy. Um, and this movie is definitely iffy. This is a ridiculous movie. This is really the, like the jokester of the, the, the Scream franchise. This movie is very cartoonish in a lot of ways. There's some very early 2000s jokes in there. Some really bad dialogue. Um, you know, there's some um, really um, unbelievable type of, um, like, scenarios, you know, because originally the script, there was supposed to be two killers, but they changed it, flopped it to one. Um, and there's just some scenarios in this movie where it's not possible. And when you're you're grounding your, your franchise in reality, and you have, like, scenarios where the killer is in one room one second, and then is somehow in the other room, completely across on the other side of a house doesn't really make sense um it, it just doesn't make sense how they can do that um now there are some other uh really unrealistic things like the voice changer but i actually really like the voice changer i think it's something different it's fresh you know don't get me wrong i love roger l jackson's voice and he's still in this primarily at the time but i like hearing uh different voices you know i loved hearing cotton weary's voice i thought it was it was intimidating and it, this movie features one of my favorite openings i really love the opening um, specifically the part where Cotton finally gets killed. I think the dialogue's really cool. Um, you know, uh, um, you know, Cotton, you should have told me where Sydney was. Now you lose. And he just holds it up and, whoosh, and it cuts into the Scream 3 title card. I thought that was an awesome opening. You know, how they kind of try and fake you out thinking it's Cotton. But deep down, you really know it's the killer. Um, I, I really love this opening. One of my favorite openings in the franchise. Um, I think it's an effective opening. Um, it really makes you want to, it invests you in the story immediately. It makes you go, oh, why did this person want Sydney so bad? And they just killed off a character who's been in the movie since the first one, even though even a little bit in the first one, you only saw him on a TV. You got a lot of them in the second one. He actually kind of grew something towards them, whether it was hate or liked, cotton weary, and you just kill him. Um, that's the first time the franchise has killed somebody we've already known in the opening. Um, which I think was cool. Um, some things that I do not like, um, I, it, it, Roman Bridger is not in this movie anywhere near enough. When you get the reveal of Roman, I love Roman. He's a great killer. But when you get to the reveal of him, it's like, who the fuck is this guy, man? We've seen this guy in three scenes. Even Sydney's looking at him. Like, I have no idea who this person is because she doesn't, she's never met him before, you know? And it just takes away from that big reveal when the killer is somebody that the victim or the main final girl has never even met before. It just, it, it takes away from that when you're doing a whodunit story. Um, when the, the character doesn't even know who the killer is. That that's, takes away so much from the big reveal. And what takes away from the big reveal even more is the fact that he's barely in the movie. He's got three, maybe four scenes in this film that you think he's in, or that like that he's in, sorry. And um, he never appears again. Like the last time you see Roman before the reveal, you see him dead in a coffin. Which by the way, Gail checks his pulse and she thinks he's dead. Like your pulse, you can't stop your own pulse like that. Like, so that kind of leans itself more to the unrealistic thing he's got going on. Um, he also has a few moments where he disappears. Um, the fucking lighter kill where he, the guy lights the lighter and the whole house explodes. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, and uh, obviously a big glaring issue is the lack of Sydney in this movie. She's not in this movie a whole lot. Um, mainly because Nev Campbell had some scheduling issues. Um, to be honest, I don't mind it though, because I enjoy getting that extra bit of time with Gail and Dewey. Um, I think they're they're the main stars really of this movie until Sydney shows up halfway through. Um, uh, obviously Parker Posey, she's great in this movie too. I think she's hilarious. Um, her and Gail's interactions and the way they butt heads is so freaking funny. Um, 
and oh, I forget his name, uh, David Warburger, I think, Warbur, something like that. Um, as a security guard, he's also hilarious. I think he's so funny. Just every, everybody that involves himself with Parker Posey just naturally gets funny. I don't know what, what it is. She's just got that effect on people. Um, anytime somebody's doing a scene with them, it just it's just funny. She's so talented and she's so funny. Parker Posey, seriously, her and Kirby are like some of the greatest side characters in horror history. I'm not even kidding. Um, also, one last thing. The, um, the little cameo from... Uh, you know, Princess Leia herself uh, was hilarious uh, halfway through the movie. So, yeah, that's where I'm putting Scream 3. Next up on this list, we have Scream 5, 5 Cream, Scream 2022. Um, now, I remember when this movie first came out, I really hated it. Um, it's grown on me a bit. I'm still not the biggest fan of this movie. I think the 4, 3, and 5 are all bad movies. Um, but I feel like this movie does actually have some you know, some good about it. Um, I, I'm going to start with the negatives. Um, my main issue with this movie is you can tell it is trying to bank in off the success of Halloween 2018. You can just tell the producers, the directors, they, the whole crew looked at 2018 and went, man, they made a lot of fucking money off of a, a requel. Let's do it ourselves. And they fucking did it. Um, to, and to the effect was nowhere near as um you know as a, it wasn't no anywhere near as effective as halloween 2018 came out i don't care what anyone says halloween 2018 is a fucking masterpiece best movie in the franchise i, I argue with people about that all the time i know i'm going on a side tangent but it's so frustrating P that movie's so underappreciated which is crazy because at the time it when it first came out it was loved that movie is not aged well with people um aside from me um, because I, it's, it's a true freaking masterpiece. And again, they saw that and tried to do it and it just didn't work out the same way. Um, just look at the, the fucking, you know, box office, Halloween 20 made 250 million. In this movie made like 140. Um, so, you know, proof is in the pudding, but anyways, scream five. Uh, yeah, it just definitely really feels like it was trying to do that. Um, and they even name drop Halloween 2018 in this movie, you know. Um, I think this movie's got some really bad dialogue. Um, oh my god, they're making a requel, really bad. Um, when Dewey starts explaining the rules to horror movies, I cringed so hard. Um, something about this just feels different. Like, come on. Like, we. I feel like one, at least one character says that every movie. Um, so yeah, some really bad dialogue there. Um, oh, never fuck with the daughter of a serial killer. Like, you're never going to say that to your boyfriend who's trying to kill you. Like, just really bad dialogue. Um, also, they try to make... Sam, in this movie, is like... She reminds me of Rey from Star Wars. Um, just because they try and push this narrative that, oh, there's a chance that Sam could be crazy. She could be a killer herself because she's the daughter of Billy Loomis, which I actually like. But they try and push this narrative that she's psycho. And that kind of led into that whole bit of dialogue I just said. You never fuck with the daughter of a serial killer. And she's just hacking up her boyfriend like fucking crazy. It just feels very forced and unrealistic. It doesn't feel very natural. Because um, they're, like, they're like praising it. It's like, look at this character. She's a serial. She could be a serial killer. Just like Billy Loomis. Look at this, guys. That's really what it feels like this movie's trying to do. And it's just, I see right through it. It's just corny shit. Um, this is definitely the Disney of, the, the, the Disney Star Wars movie of the Scream franchise. Um, you know, I, the, the way they killed off Dewey was complete bullshit. I mean, you really made fucking Amber, a, a 17 year old high school student, kill off Dewey, who's been dealing with these killers for 30 years. Like, come on, man. Like, come on. Like, there ain't no way she would have killed him, man. Um, I would have forgiven it maybe a little teeny bit more if it was Richie. Not even, just a tiny bit. Like, dude, like, come on. Like, why would you make her, of all killers, do that? Like, no, wrong person, man. I mean, if they would have killed off Gale, I think they should have killed off Gale, personally. Um, but they didn't. They went with Dewey. Dumb idea. Um, again, I like the fact they brought back Skeet Ulrich. I, I do find his moments where he does show up very amusing. I think they're funny as shit. Um, 
kind of making him a good guy. Not not a good guy, but somebody you're like kind of rooting for because you're kind of rooting for Sam and he's rooting for Sam. So naturally you're kind of on like the same team. Um, it's whatever. I think Jenna Ortega's acting is really good in this movie. Um, I do really like the way she acts. Um, I do think this movie's introduced some good characters is all. Just they weren't fleshed out enough yet. That would come in the sequel. Um, not very fleshed out in this movie, but still good characters. Um, I do not mind Amber as a killer. I do like her as a killer. It's just the fact that she was the one that killed Dewey pisses me off. I don't like Richie as a killer. I think he was a bad killer. Also, this movie goes way too far with the whole uh, stab franchise thing. I'm so, I'm so over um, them talking about stab. I'm, I'm so glad they took it out of Scream 6 a lot. Like, I'm pretty sure stab only gets mentioned once. You don't see anything from a stab movie or anything like that. It, it's very clear, which I was so happy they did because, man, I cannot stand that they do that. Like, it was cool in the first, uh, in the second movie, cool in the third, fourth came around, it got ridiculous with that opening, and then five, it was just, oh, it blew it such out of proportion that I hated it. This movie's got a good soundtrack. I don't remember if I mentioned that. I do really like the soundtrack in this movie. There's some good tunes like Sacrifice. That's a good one that I can think of off the top of my head. I um, really like the soundtrack. I like the brutality of the killer. I like the quick succession stabs that they do. Um, that's something new. And they, they really, like, when they get stabbed, it's like loud, man. Like, I remember being in the theater for this movie and just hearing the... <laughs> every time somebody got stabbed, it was really loud. Like, it was shaking the seats. Um, so I thought that was something cool that they did. It really gave emphasis to the deaths, you know? Um, but yeah, that's where I'm ranking Scream 5. Coming in in number three, we have Scream 6, the sequel. This is a far superior movie. Like, these movies aren't even close. Like, Scream 5 is here, and Scream 6 is all the way over here. Like, they are very... Like, Scream 5 is a distant number three. Or, sorry, distant number four. Um, Scream 6 comes in. Scream 6 is a great movie. I really love this movie. The writing is better. The characters are better. Almost everything's better about this movie. Um, so I'll start with the things I liked. Um, I really liked, again, the way they flesh out the characters. Mindy, Chad are both so much better in this movie. They're so much more fleshed out. They got so much more personality. Um, Sam is much more rootable in this movie because they kind of, they, they hinted at that whole serial killer thing in the beginning. Um, but then they kind of scrapped it really quick which I was happy about. They got rid of all the corny dialogue. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's maybe a few probably still in there, but I, I can't think of any off the top of my head, which is a good sign. Um, I love the inclusion of some of the new characters, like Wayne Bailey, I think as a cop, as the, before we knew him as Ghostface, I think he was really good. Even as Ghostface, I really liked him. You got Quinn, before she was Ghostface, she was cool. She's a terrible Ghostface. Um, Ethan, uh, Ethan's a bad character. There's nothing good about that kid. Sorry, um, but it's just, he's nothing. Um, I really like Annika. She's a cool character. You know, she, she provided some, um, she provided some just warmth to the group. It made really, her really made the group feel more like a family. You know, I like the core four line. I didn't find that line cringy, actually. I actually liked it because it really made them feel like a family, you know. They felt closer than they ever did in Scream 5. In Scream 5, they felt very distant. In this, you know, like, they're living in the same apartment building. They are with each other nonstop. They really feel like family. In Scream 5, they knew Sam, but even they were saying at the... Like, even Amber and Mindy were talking shit about her at the bar. So, it was like... They really weren't that close. This film, they are very close. Uh, which I really like. I also like Sam's boyfriend. I can't remember his name, but he's a... I really like his character. I don't know why... I find him very charming. I really like his character. I love the whole thing that they did with, um, you know, leaving the masks and you got the, the broken masks. Little nitpick here. I really wish they would have um, maybe just made their own instead of using 25th anniversaries and just breaking them apart or like, you know, adding the details. Because I don't know when I remember when I saw the trailer for Scream 6, I was like, that's not an original. That's not a Gen 1 or a K and B. And I was hoping in the theater that there was going to be at least one scene with the K and B. Like at the end where Wayne pulls the mask out of his vest 
and shows it to Sam and tries to hand it to her. I was really hoping that was going to be a K and B or a Gen 1, and it wasn't. Um, I understand those are very hard masks to find, um, the Gen 1s. But, you know, you can always sculpt your own. And I was hoping that's what they would have done, but they didn't. Um, so that's a minor nitpick. Um, but I love how they're talking about the old, you know, killers. And it feels a little unrealistic. Um, but I still really like that they were acknowledging the past. I think that was cool. I always love when movies, you know, go into the nitty gritty details and look back at where they've come from and things like that. Um, the whole shrine thing, again, as unrealistic as it was i still think it was cool getting to see you know the whole scope of everything and you know getting to see all the old memorabilia and things like that the old robes and the only issue with that is they just did it for the complete wrong characters man why would it just really didn't make sense to me why they would want all that shit like i understand it was richie's and it was his collection but i feel like leaving all the old masks behind and everything like that would have been such a cool build-up for somebody like Stu Mocker to return, which they do name drop him in this movie and suggest that he's still alive. Um, so it would have been sick if it was him. Um, I hope they bring him back in Scream 7, man. It, it's time. Everybody's been wanting it. I don't care if it's predictable. Make it so it's less predictable, you know? Do something. You guys are writers, man. Like you, It's your job to write good. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I just think it was the wrong people to do that with. Um, I, I don't, again, I don't like Quinn and Ethan as killers. Wayne Bailey is cool. I think he's a funny killer. He's in my, I don't think he's in my top five, if I remember correctly. I don't remember my ranking off the top of my head, but, um, he's, um, definitely one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, I, I like him, but again, it's just not, it's not their place to be leaving all the old shit. Like, they're the last killers i would have wanted to do that because they just have no ties to that past you know um not like somebody like Stu did he had tie like he would have ties to all of that it would make sense i feel um but you know that they didn't go with that route unfortunately i love the atmosphere of new york if it's so refreshing this movie is a breath of fresh air it really is it is such a breath of fresh air, especially after the fucking clusterfuck that was the pr the previous two films, Scream 4, or previous three, really, Scream 4, 5, and 6, or, sorry, 3, 4, and 5, um, just mess, messy movies, those three movies were a mess, this movie feels very focused, it feels like it's got a clear path, it knows what it wants to do, it knows where it wants to go, um, uh, I like... I, too many people survive this movie. I know it's a common, like, nitpick. It's not really a nitpick. Way too many people survive this movie. First of all, Mindy would have died. Uh, she got stabbed and then, like, the fucking knife twisted in her stomach. I know I'm not talking about Annika. I'm talking about Mindy. Um, or maybe she was stabbed a couple times. I forget how she was. She was stabbed in the gut a few times, I think. Um, she would not have survived that. Secondly, fucking Chad would not have lived, man. Chad would have been so dead he got stabbed like 20 times by two different people in the chest and the stomach areas. Like, you're telling me they missed every major artery, vein, fucking tendon, everything? Like, there ain't no way, bro. There ain't no way they missed his heart. Like, they spent, were stabbing him all over. And somehow he survived. Same with uh, Tara. She was stabbed in the gut. And had, um, where else? She, I think she was stabbed in the gut twice. And she survived. Like, it's ridiculous. Um... Yeah, Wayne Bailey, another one. Bro, he was stabbed all over his fucking body. And he somehow survived until Sam stabbed him in the head. Like, Gail is the only one who almost died in this movie that I could say, alright, I see how she lived. She got stabbed in the shoulder, stabbed in the thigh, and stabbed right here with a piece of glass. Um, the, the shoulder and knives one, the shoulder and the thigh one were knives. But this one was stabbed to the abdomen with a piece of glass. I could see how she survived. And barely. Like, she barely survived that. Um, but, you know, Chad lived through what he lived through. Like, it doesn't make sense. Also, that scene bothers me. I love, don't get me wrong, I love that apartment scene where she, the killer's chasing down Gail. But there ain't no way Mindy was doing all that. The only thing that it explains that it was Mindy is when Gail flips her over. Like, I could see Gail doing that to Mindy. Not, or not Mindy, sorry, Quinn. I don't know why I'm calling her Mindy. Quinn. Um, there ain't no way she was throwing a, you know... 200 pound man like that 
Um, uh, Quinn, I keep calling her Mindy. Quinn, I could definitely see her getting thrown through a table like that by Gail. That makes sense. But there ain't no way Quinn was hucking that guy through the bookcase like that. It just, it's not possible. But still, really good movie. Really enjoyed it. Coming in in second place, we have Scream 2. This is a really solid sequel. This is a very solid sequel, actually. Uh, every time I rewatch this, I feel like I like it more and more and more. I don't have too many gripes with this movie. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the opening. I just don't like it. I, I don't... I don't feel... First of all, I don't feel attached to Omar Epps. I do feel attached to Jada Pinkett Smith just a little in that opening scene, I feel like they make her somewhat likable. Um, I just don't like the whole stab. I just, I've just never really been a fan of it. I really haven't. I think it's corny, in my honest opinion. Um, but I don't mind it, uh, the opening. It's just, I don't like that the fact it was, like, in a theater and everybody's got masks on. It's like, dude, like, first of all, that would never happen in a theater. Um, you would see, like, there ain't no way she died in front of all y'all like that. And, like, y'all didn't realize until it was too late. Like, I, just, I didn't, I didn't like the opening. I also, he puts his ear up to the, the stall and it gets, he happens to stab right in the exact spot that Omar Epps put his ear up to. It just didn't really, I didn't like it. It was nowhere near as effective as the first film, in my opinion. Um, so I, yeah, not a huge fan of the opening. Um, in terms of the killers, I love Mickey Altieri. He is one of my favorite killers, man. He's top five easy. Um, maybe top, th I think he's top three for me if I have to go back and look at my list. But yeah, top three killer. I love him. He is, brings this this excitement and this personality to the role. So similar to Billy. Um, he's like the perfect combination between Billy and Stu. He's got Stu's excitement, but he's got Billy's like, you know, charmingness, but also like really sadistic vibe. Um, so he's a great killer. Um, Nancy Loomis, she's all right. I mean, she, first of all, Mickey and Nancy both aren't in this movie enough. Um, Mickey really needed to show up like in that 40 minute, there was a 40 minute gap between the last time you see him and the reveal. He really should have shown up much more between that gap. Um, you know. It just, he wasn't in it enough. And same with Nancy. I would have been okay if Nancy wasn't in it as much. If Mickey was in it more. Um, just so, because the fact that she's in it so, like, not that much at all. I feel like adds to the fact that it's like, it can't be her. She's barely in it. There's no way it's her. And then you just get that big reveal. Um, and then to go on top of that reveal, you find out it's his mother. Billy's mother. Um, which, you know, is... It's kind of like a double reveal in a way. Kind of like what they did in Scream 6 where they had Richie's family to get that double reveal. Um, you found out who it was and then on top of that you found out the motive. Um, that's actually like a big surprising motive. Um, so I, yeah, I just wish Mickey was in the movie more. Um, I think the cast was great. Um, I, I hate the fact that they killed off Randy. I think that's something they came to regret, especially like when Scream 3 geared up. That's why they kind of slipped in that little cameo dumbest idea to kill him off in a way it was good you know it's not like this isn't like a dewey situation where he was just killed horribly in a horrible way by a terrible character um or like by the worst possible character possible like i can understand why randy was killed off in the way he did i didn't feel like oh that's a fucking shit way to kill him off. Oh, that's so stupid it was more of like no he's my favorite character no it's kind of like that um He's such a great character. Even in this, he's amazing. He, I wish he was in it more, really. I really wish they didn't kill him off. That was my main problem. That's my main issue with this movie, the fact they kill him off. Really wish they wouldn't have done that. Um, they, they did another Dewey fake-out death, um, which, I, you know, I didn't mind. You know, it's kind of, it kind of became like his tradition, but um, I loved Sydney in this. She's just as good as she was in the second one. I do love... Uh, Mickey, when he's not, even when he's not the killer, I think he's so freaking funny. He's such a big personality. Um, just, God, any actor from the fucking 90s, you name it, they're in this movie, dude. You name it. Um, I like ha Hallie, uh, Sid's friend. Derek, her boyfriend. I like her too. Or hit her. I like him too. Um, really, So, like, really good side characters and, you know, things like that. 
I'm just trying to think of like things that there's not really much I don't like about this movie. I love pretty much everything about it. You know, Ghostface is as great as ever. Um, one little difference. I don't know what it was about this movie. It is weirdest nitpicks. I'm, I'm really into small details like this. The voice sounds very muffled in this movie. Um, even when he's using it in person, it still sounds very muffled. And I don't know if it's because he's got it in the mask. I think that's why he, it just sounds more muffled than it did in the first film. Um, it doesn't sound as clear as it did in the first movie. Um, that's just small nitpick. Um, I just wanted to point that out. But I love Ghostface in this movie. I think he looks even better in this movie because I'm a. I love the Gen Two mask. I, I, I love that in the RDS. Two of my favorite masks from Scream. If you know Ghostface masks, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I think he looks great in this movie. Love the new sparkly robe he's got going on. Awesome. Um, I love love the scene where he kills Sarah Michelle Gellar and he throws her off the balcony. Um, it's a great scene. I think that's an awesome kill. Kills in this movie are great. Step up from the first movie. You know, you get the, the guy who gets the the pole impaled in his head. And he's like shaking and shit. Great kill. The whole car sequence. The chase scene in the, in the audio editing room. Great scene. This movie's got so much greatness in it. This is a great sequel, um, which are rare in horror movies. Um, fantastic sequel, seriously. Coming in at number one, though, it's a no-brainer. You got the first Scream movie. This is a fucking masterpiece movie. One of my favorite horror movies of all time. One of my favorite movies of all time. This movie is such a masterpiece, man. There is almost nothing to, to hate about this movie. The acting is fantastic. Skeet Ulrich it just does an amazing job. Same with Matthew Lillard. You know, I love uh, um, Nev Campbell. Jamie Kennedy is Randy. Just the, the whole crew. Um, I don't know the actress for... Um, Tatum, I don't know her name, but she's great in this. I think she's the best supporting character in the whole franchise. I really love, love Tatum. When she got killed off, um, it was kind of it kind of sucked. Um, so love the characters, man. Um, the the my only complaint with this movie is I wish it was longer. <laughs> I can't get it. It's like I have these things. I kind of have the same problem with all the Halloween movies that I love. I wish they were longer. They feel so short when you love them more. Um, and I feel like Scream. The first one is one of those movies that even if it was longer, it wouldn't have overstayed its welcome. Um, I feel like it's just one of those movies you're never going to get enough of. And I can't get enough of this movie. It was such a cool, creative idea. The opening is amazing. Roger L. Jackson is perfect in this movie. Oh, so, so. The dialogue's amazing. Everything about this movie is great. You know, the, the, the ghost face mask, you know, it's its debut appearance. Just fantastic. I love the first Scream. I, I, I don't feel like I express that enough. Uh, but as you can probably see in my whole collection, aside from Michael Myers, the second most probably thing I have is Scream stuff. I mean, I have so much Scream shit. Three masks right there, the box up there, the costume. I got t-shirts, more fucking masks over there. I got the action figures. Still trying to get more of those. Um, you know, there's still like a few action figures i still want to get for specifically um but I, i'm a huge scream fan i love scream it's my second favorite horror franchise which you guys have seen in my rankings um i scream and it's, it all stems from that first movie man that first movie is a masterpiece fantastic love it to death i hope you guys did enjoy this ranking if you did make sure to drop a like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye guys